Great having Tim Elliott back here on the program. He's going to be back in action October 9th, UFC Fight Night, taking on Matthias Nicolau. Tim, what's up, man? How's it going? Going good, man. How are you? Doing very well. Uh, good to see you back. Uh, I know you're supposed to fight in June against Sue Majeri, and then that fight ends up, uh, you know, not coming to fruition. Um, I, I guess it was it was sort of tough to get you an opponent after that fight had fallen through. Well, I mean, not really. They uh, well, was kind of hard for me to say. I've never been a guy who turns fights down. I just never felt like I was in a position. And I'm getting older now. But uh, when Sue fell off, they offered me uh, a couple different fights. But it was two guys that were on two losses in a row. And I just, I really wanted to get somebody who's either coming off a win or ranked above me. So uh, they kind of said, hey, if you don't take these fights, you're going to have to sit and wait a little bit. And before, I just, I've never been in a position to sit and wait. I've always needed the money. But, uh, you know, luckily I've been, I've been really active with the, during the pandemic and, and make some money. So uh, I took the opportunity to, to sit and wait. And, um, you know, now I got Nicolau. So uh, I got exactly what I wanted. Well, you piqued my interest. What uh, I don't know if you can talk about it, but what's what's your side hustle? What's making you some money on the side, or you just been saving your money properly? Well, it's moving here with with James Kraus, like he's he's helping me invest, like uh, helping me get my my finances in order a little bit, so I can have some some longevity. You know, he's 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 not just coach; he's one of my best friends, and uh, he's a guy who's made a name for himself outside of you know fighting with with coaching and also with real estate and other endeavors. So uh, I'm just. I'm stealing everything I can from him knowledge wise uh, about fighting and, and just about business and life in general. So, uh, and you know, I'm making more money, you make more money when you win. So. Yeah, that, that's cool, man. And I know Julian Mark has the same way. I know he's got a bunch of stuff going on outside the cage as well, as far as income and all that. Does that change the mentality with fighting now where it's not like you said there, you don't need the money. You can afford to turn down a fight where let's say you did take that fight. Maybe things don't go your way. I mean, there, there's not much upside in fighting a guy who's off two losses. So how has the mentality changed for you or has it changed at all? It, it has. It's changed a bunch. It's actually, it, I was getting a little bit stagnant with fighting. It, it was becoming a job. Like I needed it to survive. And I, I took fights. Um, I took a short notice fight with Brandon Royval and I wasn't really training and it was during the pandemic and the gyms were shut down. I just, I wasn't ready to fight and I had to take the fight because I had no, nothing else going on for me. And, um, and I lost that fight and it, you know, the only thing that saved it was I got fight of the night and really Brandon got his fight of the night. So, uh, that, that 50 grand helped. But, um, now it's like, I have other things to where I know I'm going to be able to make money and it takes a lot of the pressure off, off fighting. And I'm going into the gym with, uh, with an open mind to just learn and get better rather than like, I got to grind this out. I got to, you know, do this fast so I can get another fight. I'm, I'm concentrating on getting better and having fun again. And like, it's looking like possible title contention again one day to whereas before when I was just fighting to make money, it was, I didn't even want to think about the title. I wanted to just get as many fights as I could with whoever, and stack some money away for whenever I get fired again. So I have something to go on. And uh, now I'm, that's not even in my mind. I'm, I'm getting better every day. I'm learning new stuff. I'm, I'm more dangerous now than I've ever been. And, and my body's as rested as it's ever been. And um, as, as well coached as I've ever been. And I have as good a teammates as I could possibly have. It's uh, man, it's a, it's a great time to, to be alive right now and to be a flyweight. And, and it's a great matchup too. another guy like yourself who, you know, was in the UFC, came back. Uh, he's racked up a lot of really good wins, uh, you know, lately, especially. Um, what do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, you know, I, I really don't know too much about the guy. I know whenever him and I were first in the UFC before we both got cut, he wasn't somebody I was like, OK, this is somebody I want to fight right away um, because there was a bunch of other guys. But then the UFC cut a bunch of guys and like a, a, they cut a bunch of really good guys but the guys that they that, that are left are all killers so it's like you can't really pick and choose in the division the only reason why i got to be able to say you know hey i don't want to fight this guy was because i'm two wins in a row and this guy was on two losses in a row so i got put in a position to where i could make a decision yeah, no, it works out well. And, and training camp, who are you uh, getting to work with for, for this camp? I know Glory's full of a, a lot of newcomers as well, too. I know there's been a lot of people going through your gym. Who have you mainly been working with ahead of this fight? Well, and that's the thing. When people talk about uh, Glory MMA, it, it's, it's a, they talk about all the old heads like me and Julian and James, but like nobody even knows about these, these young guys that are coming in. There's, there's 18, 19-year-old kids in our gym that are just savages that nobody has any idea about. So and like, Grant, I got Jeff Molina and, and a couple other like high profile, pri uh, high profile flyweights. But uh, man, I got 18, 19 year old kids in there that, that if I don't do 
pull out all the stops. Like I'm getting bested. And sometimes I'm the best flyweight in the gym and sometimes I'm the fifth best flyweight in the gym. So, uh, I've just had an influx of, of little guys, of jujitsu guys, of, you know, guys that can hit hard guys that are good wrestlers. Um, just a steady stream of these young guys and, and they all want to, you know, they all want to kick Tim Elliott's ass, which is good. It just, it brings the best out of me and, and it brings the best out of them. So, uh, again, it's one guy will get his ass whooped and then the next day he's whooping ass and we just kind of stair step off each other and get better. But, um, um, this, uh, Jeff Molina, man, he's, uh, he's been like holding pads for me and stuff. The, the kid is a master. He's, uh, he's kind of getting me excited about going in and, and striking again to whereas I just, I hate hitting pads because I don't have a traditional style. I, it's kind of hard to hold pads for me, but, uh, man, this, this kid is, he can just pick, I can just punch at him and he'll just catch it. And, uh, man, I'm, I get, I'm excited talking to you about it. I haven't been this excited yeah. about a fight in a long time. Good. Yeah. And I know Jeff's just such an energetic guy as well. He's a student of the game too. And he watches a lot of fights too. So that must be a really good asset having him there. And like you said, bringing back the hunger with fighting, uh, just getting to train with him a lot, which is, uh, which is really good. Um, as far as the weight kind of know, you got plenty of notice here. I'm assuming that's going well. I, I know I can relate to him as you get older, the metabolism slows down a bit. So I'm assuming everything's going well with uh, plenty of time. Man, my weight cut is actually my, the best part of my fighting right now. After the Demetrius Johnson fight, uh, I have PTSD from that. I almost didn't make weight. I would have been the first ever title fight to where a guy didn't make weight. I think uh, Anthony Pettis did it right after he missed weight in a title fight. But uh, since then, I've I've just I have uh, Gina Mazzani, my wife. She's making all my meals. I literally don't eat or drink anything unless she gives it to me. It's so easy now. I think uh, I got out of practice yesterday at 136 pounds, and I have three weeks. I used to come in fight week at 152 and wow. have to cut. 52 on Tuesday to make 125. I'm, I'm well fed, well hydrated. And, uh, man, I'm, and I'm not having to train as hard anymore because I'm, I'm getting better. I don't have to just like kill myself because I'm actually have some technique now. So as far as the diet and weight cut go, uh, man, that's, I feel like I'm better at that than anybody in, in the UFC. Like if I, if everything else is equal and it comes on who had a better weight cut, I'm going to win the fight. There you go. That's nice. I imagine James Cross will be in your corner. Gina going to be in your corner? Or how are you doing the corner situation? Uh, James, Gina, and Jeff Molina. <laughs> nice. There you go. Three J's. It's uh, Well, G, I guess, in between there, but you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah. How do you envision the fight playing out, man? Because obviously you feel like you're going to win, but how, how do you see it playing out? And uh, just the way that I've been practicing and training, and, and I've changed my whole game. I used to take guys down, and then I'd jump on a guillotine, and I would Missed the guillotine and we'd be back on our feet. And then I'll take the guy down. And I fought uh, Louis Smolka and I did that 12 times. 12 times I took him down. 12 times I fell off the head for a guillotine. And, and 12 times he got away. Uh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, uh, I'm Khabibing guys now. I'm getting a takedown, one around, holding guys down and, and beating them up. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to three round dominate this guy. He's, I'm not finishing guys is not what I've been doing in practice. I've been taking guys down and punishing them. And, and it's just, it's, it's something I've never done before. And it feels really good. Anybody can catch somebody in a, in a scrambly submission, but uh, to, to hold somebody down for 15 minutes and rub their face in the mat is, is pretty demoralizing. And, and it's just been keeping me from taking damage. So uh, I plan on just grinding this guy out for 15, 15 hard minutes. You want to get one more in this year? I mean, you kind of mentioned it there. You're like, I'm not in a rush. I don't need to do this. You know, like I don't need to, to take the fights for, you know, financially. Um, is that kind of the plan or do you want to just see how this goes and then reassess for next year? <laughs> this would be the first time that I've ever answered this question with, I'm going to take some time off after this win. I'm going to, I'm going to beat this guy and, and reassess like what, what do we really want to do? And, uh, my wife and I both fight in the, the same weight class. And I feel like when I'm in fight camp and this one was two fight camps in a row, she doesn't want to take a fight because she has to take care of me. And then, you know, it's, it's only fair that when she goes into fight camp, I help take care of her, her diet and weight cut and, and her, um, MMA schedule is 10 times what mine is. She trains 10 times as much. She, she, she diets 10 times as hard and as long. And, uh, she just, her training camps are way more intense and I, I, I just couldn't do it. So, uh, I'm going to, I'm hoping that after this fight, she can get her fight and we'll just go back and forth like that. So you said wife there. Did I miss, did you guys get married? I know you were engaged, but did you, uh, did you get married? Yeah. Next October. 
Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was like, Tim, I don't think I missed that. Uh, just, just making sure that I wasn't up to date on everything. Cause uh, I was going to say with the pandemic, I know like everyone's having their wedding. Like now, like I just, I, I saw, I just had a couple friends even recently, like have their weddings like at this point, because everything got postponed because of COVID. Right. And that's the thing is during COVID we said, Oh, if it wasn't for COVID, we'd already be married. But I think it's just every time we're going to plan for a wedding, it's, you know, it's, it's fight time. And, and we're, we're already married. We live together. We got a six year old. We have two dogs, two goats, two cats. Like it's pretty serious. <laughs> I'd, I'd say so. I, I mean, once you live with someone, I mean, I've always said this, it's kind of like being married because it's tough to get out of that. And also I think if you can live with someone, you could probably be married to them. Right. So All right, we're going on four years living together. So there you go. There you go. You got a, you got, you got the experience on your belt before we get out of here. Got to mention this Laura Sanko, someone I know, you know, quite well, uh, getting that gig with Dana White contender series, first UFC female commentator, just your thoughts on her years of hard work and getting this huge opportunity and making a bit of history in the process. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing short of amazing, but aside from all that, it's like, it was a lot of work for her. She didn't just hustle with the UFC and do everything they ask. She was doing uh, LFA and, and Titans and, and, and victors and traveling all over. So like the amount of legwork that she does is, and not, not just that, like also on the contender series, she was doing two or three different jobs and, and she asked for all that. And, and not only just like the amount of work, but she knows, she knows her fighting. She knows her fighters. She knows the guy's names. Um, she, she speaks well she, and she knows the sport. I actually, uh, I cornered her in her first pro MMA fight. So uh, yeah, I know Laura well, and it's not like she got this job because she's a pretty blonde white girl she she worked her ass off and and she just also happens to be a pretty blonde white girl so uh yeah she's making history and also like working her ass off and uh giving yeah and she's also here training on the weekends and, and she could fight too she could fight and she can grapple and and uh yeah i mean i could cry right now i'm so excited for her she's she's one of my best friends that's awesome. Sorry, you piqued my interest there. You cornered her for her first fight. What was that experience like getting to do that? And now, obviously, looking back now, it's pretty crazy to see what, what she's been, you know, done since then. Yeah, it's and that's what I say. Like she's been she's been doing this and in this game and and since as long or longer than I have. So yeah, uh, cornered her in amateur fights too. I think, but definitely her first and only pro fight uh, in Invicta. I cornered her. What was that like? Like kind of, you know, get, taking her there and giving her advice and stuff. Like, like what was that for you as a fighter? Cause I think you would have been a little bit established at that point, right? When you were cornering her. Yeah, a little bit, but like at that time it was, you know, we were just friends, cor even James and I were like, we were just friends cornering each other. And like, I'm no, I'm no main corner or lead quarter, but I, I was one of her main training partners and she was one of mine. There wasn't a ton of, at that time, Grindhouse didn't have, you know, 15 guys in the UFC. It was me and James Krause and Zach Cummings and Laura Senko and like that's it really like everybody else like came after so uh to see that and you know she's one and oh as a MMA pro and but now she's uh you know commentating and on TV every weekend so it's uh it's it's inspiring uh and and like she made it but it was with a, a ton of hard work nobody sees all the hard work that she put in to get where she's at there you go. Tim, thanks so much for doing this. Looking forward to the fight. UFC fight night, October 9th. Anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media, anything you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Uh, man, just my, my gym, uh, Glory MMA and Fitness, James Krause. He's, he's doing big things here in Kansas City. Like he's, these, these guys, like I, and I said this earlier, I was like, it's not a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of old heads in there in the UFC, but there's some young guys in there. Like the next four, five, six years, you're, like that's where the champions are coming. We may not have one in, in my generation coming up with these, with these guys, but these next, this next group that's coming up that that's it, something special. That's something to be seen.